Welcome to the lesson 15 video. This is going to be a video with a whole bunch of practice problems and review. Um, so if you follow along on that page, there's four, I think, four activities for that warm up. Try to work through those. Pause the video while you're doing that. Unpause it when you're done. See how you did. All right, so number one, it says use multiplication to find the equivalent fraction. So in this case, the least common denominator is going to be 12. I get to 12 by multiplying the top and bottom of that first fraction by 3 to get 9 over 12. And the second one, top and bottom multiply by 2 to get 8 over 12. So then I have 9 twelfths plus 8 twelfths equals 17 over 12. Number 2, my least common denominator is 10. So I've got 4 over 10. And then the next one, I multiply by 1 over 1 to just leave it as 3 tenths. So I've got 4 tenths minus 3 tenths equals 1 tenth. Activity 2, you just cir circle the simplified equivalent fraction. Number 1 is 1 half. Number 2 is 1 third. Number 3, I could divide top and bottom there by 3. That's maybe one that's a little bit trickier. That's 4 fifths. And number 4, I could divide top and bottom by 6 to get 1 fourth. And number five, that I could divide that top and bottom by eight to get three fourths. Okay, for some of these, you might have had other equivalent fractions in there. For example, three fourths and six eighths are the same thing. And those are also the same thing as 12 sixteenths, but we need to simplify as far as we possibly can. All right. Now, for these ones, we want to convert the decimal numbers to fractions or from fractions to decimal. Make sure we have our answers in simplest form. 25 cents is our easiest, one of our benchmark fractions. It's a quarter, so that's one fourth. Two over six, we know is the same thing as one third if we simplified the fraction, but I need to write it as a decimal. That is 0 0.3 repeating forever. One half is 0 0.5. 10 over four, if I think of that, as 10 divided by 4. 4 goes into 10 two times. Have that 0. Goes into 25 times. That's 2 and 1 half, so 2.5. If we're not sure how to change from a fraction to a decimal, just divide and see what you get. Number 5, we have 6 in the tenths place. We need to simplify. Our answer should be 3 fifths. Okay, similarly, we have 9 in the tenths place, but when we simplify, we actually just get 9 tenths. There's nothing else that I can simplify because 9 and 10 don't have a common factor. Number 7, I'm going to simplify the fraction first. Divide top and bottom both by 5 to get 3 fourths, which we know as a decimal is 0 0.75. Number 8, you could say is 40 over 100. You could say is 4 over 10. They're the same thing, but I need to simplify even further to 2 over 5. For this activity, we're going to select the 100 square grid that best represents the problem. So if I take 0 0.25 divided by 0 0.05, I need to take um, 25 squares divided into groups of 5 squares. All right. Now, if I'm careful, I can double check a few of these things. Right now, I know that A is not it because that has 30 squares colored in. Same thing with C. B has 25 squares colored in. They're not colored in all in one column or all in one row like we're used to, but I have 25 colored in and then five um, groups within there. Number two, I have to have the entire thing colored in, so I know it can't be C, and then divide it into groups of 25 pieces. B is colored or covered in size 20 pieces, so it's got to be A. Number three, 0 0.4 divided by 0 0.2 has to be C. That's the only one that's got 40 colored in and two groups, because if I divided that thing out, I would equal two. There's 20 of those little squares in each of those two groups in C. For these ones, add or subtract the fractions and decimal numbers and simplify your answer. When you add fractions, you need to have a common denominator. So this is 3 sixths plus 3 sixths, which is 6 over 6, which equals 1. Number 2, we should have 3 over 21 plus 5 over 21 equals 8 over 21, and that does not simplify. Number 3, we need to have a common denominator of 15, so we've got 12 fifteenths minus 5 fifteenths 
equals 7 fifteenths. That one does not simplify. For number four, it's going to help if you stack your, um, your question there. Make sure to borrow. 10 minus 5 is 5. 8 minus 4 is 4. Decimal 0. We've got 0 0.45. Same thing with number five, it might be helpful if you stack them. So 0 0.11 plus 0 0.98. When we add and subtract our decimals, make sure we line up the decimal place. It's a nine, 10, carry the one. We've got 1.09. Number six, common denominator, we've got 16 over 18 plus nine over 18 equals 25 over 18. All right, so, uh, depending on who your teacher is, maybe they want you to go a little bit further. I like leaving them as um, improper fractions. That's going to be more helpful moving forward in your math career. So for this next one, I could have 10 over 20 minus 5 over 20, which equals 5 over 20, which is 1 fourth. There are other ways to do that one, but that is your simplified answer. Number 8, you've got 0 0.66. Number 9, this one might trick you if you're not paying attention to your place values. You get a borrow, it's a seven, a two decimal zero, so 0 0.27 or 0 0.270. All right, now we want to multiply these fractions. When we multiply, remember we need to have our de total number of decimals the same, total number of decimal places. So that's 35. And then it'd be a whole bunch of zeros. And then I had to move over two spots. So that's 0 0.35. When you multiply fractions, it's just top times top over bottom times bottom. Those are a lot easier. When you divide fractions, it's keep the first, change to multiply, flip the second. It's 15 over 10. And then simplify your answer to get 3 over 2. Okay, number four, instead of multiplying all the way across, I'm going to realize that I'm multiplying and dividing by three. This is the same thing as 11 over 10 times three over three, but three over three is just one. If you're multiplying by one, you're not changing anything. That's 11 over 10. Number five, we've got eight over 63, which cannot quite be simplified. Number six, 1.047 times 0 0.2. You could put either number on top. I just chose this way because it's going to be a little bit shorter. 2 times 7 is 14. Let's carry the 1. 2 times 4 is 8. Plus 1 is 9. 2 times 0 is 0. 2 times 1 is 2. Okay. Then I would have zeros because next thing I'm multiplying by there is 0. So I need to have 1, 2, 3, 4 spots after the decimal. So I start here at the right and go back 1, 2, 3, 4 spots to get 0 0.2094 for an answer. Number seven, 0 0.9 divided by 0 0.2. We move the decimal one time in each spot in the divisor and in the dividend. So we've got nine divided by two, which two times four is eight. Keep the decimal there, bring that down. We've got ourselves 4.5. Number eight, 0 0.004 divided by 0 0.03. We move two spots. So I've got 0 0.4 divided by three. Three goes into zero zero times, but into four once. Add on as many zeros as necessary. Three goes into 10, three times without going over. We're gonna end up having that same issue forever. We're going to keep getting threes. So that's 0 0.13 with a line over just the three. And then number nine, we have seven over nine times six over three, which is 42 over 27. Now this is a number that people are going to want to say, oh, that doesn't simplify, but it does. All right. I could have done seven over nine times, well, six over three is just two over one if I had simplified. That fraction to begin with, so that's 14 over 9. All right, I divided top and bottom by 3 from 42 over 27 to get 14 over 9. So for these, we're going to find the minimum, the maximum, the range, mean, and median. Minimum is easiest. It's the smallest, and this one's already written in uh, smallest to biggest form, so that's nice for that one. 
The max is going to be 26. The range is max minus min, which is 25. The mean, that's when we have to add them all up. So 1 plus 3 plus 3 plus 10 plus 20, or plus 11 plus 14 plus 26. I started writing 26, so I started saying it at the same time. Add them all up. Well, 6 and ten, 4 make 10. 11, 14, 17, 18. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So I've got 68, which is not my mean. I take that number and divide by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. If I divide that by 7, I'm going to get, um, well, 7 goes into 68 9 times. 7 goes into 57 times. Goes into 10 one time. Got to keep adding zeros. Goes into that um, four times. And now this is where you might be thinking, hey, maybe I made a mistake. So you should go back and double check just to be sure because we don't normally get these crazy of numbers. So 6 plus 4 is 10, plus 1 is 11, um, plus 0 is still 11, plus 3 is 14, plus 3 is 17, plus 1 is 18. Okay, 18. Carry the 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, I just want to make sure that I, I added right because it's possible that you don't sometimes. You should always check, especially when you get these crazy ones. So I'm going to say my mean is about 9.714. We're going to go like that and then continue on and see if we get something a little bit nicer. Because if I go on here, it goes into 20 twice. There's a 6 there. How many times can it go into 60? That's 8 times. 8 times 7 is 56. So I've got a 4. How many times can we go into 40? Well, we can go into 40 um, 5 times. That'd be 35. How many times can we go into 50? Hey, that we already had that one right there. So I know I'm going to be repeating. I'm going to be repeating after that 5. So the next thing that showed up would be that 7. So I should have 9.7142 the line over it. That's a terrible, awful, just super mean, mean. Luckily, the median is really easy to find. Small, big, small, big, small, big. My median is 10. Way faster. For number two, it's not written in smallest to biggest form for us. We should do that. So smallest is five, then a seven, then a nine, 10, 12, 33, 40, 52. So I got them all. My minimum is 5. My maximum is 52. My ma uh, range is maximum minus minimum. It's going to be 47. My mean, I got to add these ones up again. So 52, 40, 33, 12, 10, 9, 7, 5. And add. 2 plus 0 plus 3 is 5. Plus 2 is 7. Plus 0 is 7. Plus 9 is 16, plus 7 is 23, plus 5 is 28, 2 plus 5 is 7, plus 4 is 11, plus 3 is 14, 15, 16. It's 168 divided by, there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 numbers. This one's going to divide way nicer. This is going to be 21. My mean is 21. Now my median, I go small, big, small, big, small, big. I get down to the final two, and I have to take the mean of those two. So 10 plus 12 is 22. Divide that by 2 to get 11 for my median. All right, so select the graphs that show a line of best fit. Circle the letter, then tell whether the graphs show a direct or indirect relationship. So the ones that are... Very, very easy to see, I think, are this one right down here. This one right there. And I would say that one. These other ones, these top three, don't really work quite so great. They're kind of too spread out. So this first one, this is direct. As it gets bigger to the right, it also gets bigger up. And these other two are indirect. Okay, as they get bigger going to the right, they get smaller or shorter up and down. 
Now we want to construct a box and whisker plot from the set of data. So we've got a whole bunch of different things. So we got to make sure we put them in order from smallest to biggest first. So five, my next smallest, I'm thinking 50. Yep, and then I've got a 66 was the next one, a 73, 79, 80, 81, 82, 83, 88, 100, 111, and then 120. Make sure I get all of them. So remember, we need to figure out what our minimum and our maximum are, which we've got. There's our minimum. There's our maximum. And we need to figure out what our median is. So I'm going to do this without crossing them off, just so I can see the numbers still. I'm going to write a little check mark above them. So small, big, small, big, small, big, back and forth. So my median is 81. Now I need to find a median of each of those halves. So do the same thing. I'm going to use green this time. Ignore the 81. So I need halfway between those two. So 66 plus 73 is going to be 139. I take 139 divided by 2. There's a decimal involved this time. That's okay. 2 goes into 10 five times. So my median of the lower half is going to be um, 69.5. Do the same thing with the upper half. Small, big, small, big. And then I need to find the, the median of, or the mean of those two. Which if I add those together, I get 188. Divide that by 2. I get 94. Okay, so I need to find a box and whisker plot, and I've got those five numbers that I need. So first, the far left, and then I go all the way over here to the far right. There's, I have to draw my number line first. I put those little marks on there to say, hey, this is a five, and I'm going to say this is 120. I need those numbers on there. Now I need to figure out the rest. Now try to make this as good as you can. Um, so I know that... 5 to 120 is 115 away, so half of 115 is a little bit trickier to find, but if I know half of 100 is 50, half of 110 would be 55, so I say 55-ish is right in there. We don't need to necessarily write out where that is. What I do need to know is where 69.5 is and where 94 is. So 69.5 is going to be about here. I'm going to say 69.5 like that. 94 is not quite all the way up to 120, so there's 94. I'll say is right there. There's my box. My whiskers came out to that maximum and that minimum, and my median has to be in inside that box. It's going to be a little bit closer to 94 than it is to uh, 69.5, so I'm going to say there's 81 right there. All right. The fact that this whisker is really long is because 5 does not really fit in with the rest of these numbers. Pretty much everything is above 55, even though that's supposed to be the middle section of this number line. Okay, for the next one, we want to draw our own scatter plot. Um, so James took a survey of a bunch of people. We're talking about hours and score. So I'm going to do hours studying this way. And I'm going to go up by... Um, half hours because 30 minutes is half an hour so you can start at zero half hour one 1.5 2 2.5 3 3.5 and so on I need to get to at least six hours because there's somebody who spent six hours studying okay the midterm score I'm going to put a little break in here saying I'm skipping a bunch because my lowest number is 46. I don't want to start all the way at zero and then have to get to 100. But I do know that I need to get to 100, so I'll put a 100 up there. Then I'm going to go down by, we'll go by fives, I think. We can go by tens. We'll go by tens. 90, 80, 70, 60, 50, 
and we'll have a 40 right there. It's as low as we can go. All right, now I need to fill in my dots. So I'm just gonna go basically line by line. 30 minutes was a 72, so half hour was just barely above 70. One hour was 75, so a little bit higher when I went over to one. Six hours scored 100. So they're all the way to the right and all the way to the top. Two hours scored 55, so I go two to the right, up to 55, which is halfway between that 50 and that 60. The person who didn't study at all got a 46, so I'm gonna try to make that a little bit easier to see. So 46 is going to be halfway-ish between 40 and 50. The person that studied for three hours got 88, so that's almost all the way up to 90. The other person who did for three hours got 95, so that's straight above there still a little bit. Another 30 minute person got a 60. Uh, five hours got a 99, so it's just barely below 100. And the other five person got a little bit lower, they got a 93. They're not quite as high as this person that got a 95, pretty close. It says draw a scatter plot and then tell whether there is a um, direct or indirect or no relationship. Well, we can kind of generally see that there is a going up and to the right, so there is a direct relationship between hours spent studying and a score on the test. The people who studied more typically scored higher. Not always. Like I said, this person who scored a 93 after studying for five hours didn't score quite as high as the person who scored a 95 when studying for three, but they all beat the person who studied for no hours or half an hour. Okay, and then pretty much the rest of this stuff, I'm not even really gonna go through um, because they fill in the boxes for you. You have this in your OneNote, you can go through and read through them. Um, as you need for different pieces. There is a unit one review in your OneNote as well. I recommend doing that. You probably should just do that. Um, shouldn't recommend to say do it to get prepared for your test. All right, hope everybody has a fantastic day.